All right, everybody, welcome back. The Leonidas Effect, number two. Um, I know it's taken me a while to come up with some more uh, content regarding, uh, you know, podcast material, things to talk about. Uh, and the main reason for that is uh, when I start thinking of what to talk about, my mind gets all discombobulated. I start thinking of, you know, from little to big things, from uh, super important topics to, you know, uh, pop culture, sports. Uh, and obviously in my channel, you, you see a lot of firearms usage and night vision, uh, fitness. So I decided to, you know, uh, try to embody all of that into one subject. So this, uh, this podcast is going to be more about, you know, what, what is more relatable? What, uh, what is something that, that you know that you can fill me on and and I, I want to start talking about you know uh, the subject of of mental health and you know uh, I watch a lot of podcasts and they tend to bring in you know uh, all the biggest most famous people and they talk about things that are so unrelatable you know um, and you know, I, I can't really vibe with politicians and rappers and uh, movie stars uh, and even the other YouTube content creators, mainly because I feel like once they blow up, uh, it, it's a, a lot of it is about just putting out content and making money, getting views. I want to be different. Obviously, for my 90 something subscribers, this means very little. But um, those that do tune in, you know, one, I appreciate it. And two, um, hopefully, you know, uh, we can jive together on on, you know, the way that sometimes we tend to feel and we compartmentalize it or we, we even tend to just ignore it and move on. So, again, you know, I'm. Um, I don't want to talk too much about what I do for a living, but I will say that, you know, I, I teach high school students and I also work with um, victims of trauma, domestic violence, sexual assault, rape. Um, I believe that I was put in the position I'm in for a reason. I don't believe that things are, you know, foreordained, preordained, however you want to call it, but I do believe that, you know, I have a calling. My current calling right now is in working as much as I can on myself and my mental, along with other things, you know, financial, physical, in order so that my, my children will be better equipped um, so that I, if I'm strong, they'll be strong. Um, I'm currently reading a, a book that I'm almost done uh, reading called The Body Keeps the Score. It talks about how resilient children can be during awful times as long as they see their parents, you know, uh, staying strong, not freaking out, not, not showing that they're not keeping composure. So, you know, the, the subjects that I teach uh, children about are you know, healthy relationships, um, a little bit about domestic violence. We talk a lot about rape. We talk about consent, you know, conflict de-escalation, how you can help people if um, they ever open up to you about any type of abuse that they have endured. And in my time doing this, guys, you know, um, trauma, post-traumatic stress, um, it, it varies from person to person. And you know, uh, I used to be very ignorant when it came to uh, the these subjects prior to working in this field. Personally, I'm a criminal justice major. And, you know, I've, I've seen both sides, <laughs> the criminal side. And then obviously uh, I'm, what I believe is my form of 
you know, of fighting crime, bringing down crime rates, and that's prevention through education. Um, you know, uh, the current trends when it comes to um, mental health uh, really vary, but, you know, in this podcast, I'm going to talk about, you know, um, one, what what's helped me, uh, techniques that I use, and um, also, you know, the, what we see out there, what's uh, faced in front of us, what's shown to us from the media, from the government, uh, even from our own communities, from our parents. Uh, so again, you know, that that's what this one's about. Sorry for the long intro. But, you know, again, j um, just to get started, you know, I'm constantly in the schools. I talk to thousands of children every year. And by children, I mean 9th through 12th graders. So these are young adults, in my opinion. One of the biggest mistakes that we as adults make is forgetting our own childhood and not applying that to our everyday lives or the way that when we interact with with uh, with these people. Because remember, these are the, the next... Uh, future leaders, you know, the, the next generation, the ones that are going to take over. And, you know, when it comes to mental health, just like I said in the, in the last podcast, it's a multifaceted dynamic, mainly because, you know, we all go through different things and we all uh, we all suffer. If it's one thing that's guaranteed in this life, it's that we're going to endure, you know, uh, some tough times. Some of us are going to make it and some of us are not. Some of us are going to make it mentally. Some of us will not. Um, you know, when it comes to uh, relationships, for example, I teach about healthy and unhealthy relationships. I believe that this helps a lot for the future and, and the, the standard of decency in our society because, you know, um, I believe that all these children that I teach are going to pass on that information, transfer knowledge. I'm, I'm big on that. And, you know, um, the media involvement, social media, even gender stereotypes that are taught, from a, taught to us or, or actually are more like we're conditioned with really take a big impact in you know not only our lives the lives of the people that surround us and, and our community you know fear fear is the currency of control in my opinion and lately i believe that we as americans we've been acquiescing to every imposition placed upon us we we rarely uh, push back and I believe a lot of that is because when we do push back they'll call you crazy they'll call you a conspiracy theorist they'll even start questioning whether you're mentally okay take Kanye for example um, you know whether you agree or disagree with any of the things that he says uh, you know that's that's for another uh, conversation but you know um the government controls the media. They use it as a way to uh, keep us divided and, and control and control us. And this is no conspiracy theory. This is a fact. You know, we have uh, hundreds of years of documented proof of how, you know, the alphabet boys, different agencies, the media and the government, banks, big pharma, have all kind of conjured up ways to destabilize unity, unity within people. And whether it's about race, whether it's about gender, whether it's about politics, how you identify within those politics or even a gender. And also, you know, a religion. One of the biggest ways to divide people. I'm for religion. I believe that all the religions spread the same message. And if all of us followed that same message, man, we'd, we'd have a great world. Uh, but unfortunately, we're human. Humans are 
can easily be decepted, easily be manipulated. And, you know, once you accept an idea, an ideal as well, you know, um, it's, it's really hard to uh, change people. It's like the good old saying goes, it's easier to fool people than it is to convince them that they've been fooled. And uh, I personally believe that's where we're at today. Um, you know, again, I used to be real ignorant regarding mental health, uh, trauma, suicide, and I feel really guilty about it. I mean, I've, I've worked on that. I've gotten over it, but I feel guilty in the sense of, you know, I have close friends, family that I've most likely uh, judged um, and uh, maybe even put myself on a high horse thinking like, wow, you know, they're so weak. Wow. Um, look at me. I'm so strong. I can get over anything when in reality, you know, um, once I became a victim of, you know, depression or anxiety, any of the things that uh, we as humans go through, you know, it opened my eyes. And what mainly opened my eyes is obviously education. Um, I'm one of those people that I, I do a lot of self-help. A lot of it is through books, through reading. And, uh, you know, I know we all judge one another, but, you know, even my own friends, um, you know, they'll, they they think I'm a smart ass. And not just my close friends, my acquaintances, my co-workers, my current and previous, maybe even my family. Um and because of the way I talk and uh, and carry myself, and I I know that 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 that's probably changed the relationships that I have with people. Um, and here on this podcast, I want to apologize, but I also want to let them know that um, you know um, I deal with certain things certain ways and I know that they deal with certain things certain ways I know that we don't open up to each other especially us men going forward with those gender stereotypes in society that tell us you got to be tough you got to be strong you can't be weak you can't be emotional you can't show emotion uh you got to be about making money you got to be about you know being an alpha you know I, I hate that word and um that right there only creates more division, creates more violence, creates more bad vibes. And then we have things like relationships. You know, um, my relationship hasn't always been perfect, but I believe that it's it's as good as I perceive it and as uh, it's as good as I as hard as I try. Um, my wife and I have been together since we were 17. Um, some of it was on and off. A lot of it due to me. Um, over the years, I know I've carried trauma that I, I never sought help for. Uh, you know, until the, the recent past few years, but when it comes to relationships and marital problems, you know, uh, if we have past traumas that, that we haven't worked on, that we haven't sought help for, that, you know, um, that we keep ignoring, you know, it makes the rest of our lives very difficult. And then we have things that we honestly don't think about, and that's our subconscious mind. Um, going back to self-help uh, reading uh, this is one book uh, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind I, I probably recommend it to everybody that I know um, it's helped me a lot uh, being able to get you know control of my thoughts uh, being able to stop myself when I'm having a negative thought uh, and, and changing it uh, if I find myself in the moment of anxiety, I stop and think about, you know, what am I grateful for? Um, I am a true believer that the things that come free in this life are of even 
bigger value than the things that we pay money for but in this capitalistic society um the government the media everything has manipulated us manipulate us into becoming these consumers we get in debt which only increases our anxiety depression and in some people even suicidal thoughts and behaviors you know um I am a firm believer that the quality of your thoughts determine the quality of your life. And I know the, that that comes from stoicism, being a stoic, uh, the meditations. Another book that I come off as a huge smart ass, uh, uh, suggesting it to people. But I want those people to know that I suggest it to them because I honestly believe that it works. I rarely suggest people read, uh, you know, the Bible, the Quran, uh, any of these uh, other texts, you know, I've I've read them and they've helped me. Uh, you know, I've been in different types of uh, churches, mosques, uh, synagogues, Ask the people that know me. This is a fact. Uh, why? Because uh, we're all lost humans trying to find a place where we feel like we belong and we feel like uh, we're we're going to find some kind of salvation. Um, for me, unfortunately, it didn't come from religion. I am a religious person. I believe in God. Um, to me, uh you know, that, that is a, a personal subject, but I will tell you this. Uh, I don't believe that God was in any way, shape, or form a human. Uh, the God that I pray to, I don't know what he or she looks like, but I honestly believe that there is something there, a higher power. And, and when I pray, and when I pray with my children, with my wife, uh, I feel it, you know, and, and that right there, praying is one of those things that uh, of self-help for me personally and uh, i suggest it to everybody but you know not everybody is a is a religious person or or practices uh you know m mental healings through prayer you know uh, i personally believe that that if you apply the prayer properly and you have proper faith in it and you're not fooling yourself you can't fool your subconscious mind that you know once you plant that seed of faith and you know positivity and love you know only good things can come from there but it has to be something that you continue and you do frequently and often it's not just something that if you have a problem you do it and then you stop you know i think that's one of our biggest problems as humans is that once we feel okay we will stop doing anything that helps us or others because we're all right for the moment and then we move on until the next time that there is uh something that and that happens to us because like i said bad things are guaranteed to happen what are the few things that are guaranteed in this lifetime bad things are going to happen taxes death um and it all depends as to how you uh respond that determines the the way that you're going to uh, survive these things right um but again it you know, then there's other things that we don't have control of. Um, the potty keeps the score talks a lot about childhood trauma. Uh, you know, being a victim of neglect, domestic violence, uh, sexual assault and rape. You know, I'm, I'm not a personal uh, personally. Ha I've never suffered these things, um, but I do have family that have suffered these things. And some of them have have even taken their own lives. Um, Again, going back to my ignorance of not knowing these things, uh, I wish that I, I would have been more open to uh, actually learning while I was in college regarding my uh, philosophy and, and psychology classes that I took. Why? Because if I wouldn't have just done the bare minimum to, to graduate, if I actually paid attention and I actually really tried, uh, you know, I would have been able to, one, not judge and not uh, question the things that, you know, that I've heard from my own friends and family. Um, I would have been able to help, you know, and, and I believe that, that, that ability is within all of us. Why? Especially because of the technology that we have. We have access to information 24 fucking seven y'all. And yet most of us spend time just 
you know, scrolling through social media, YouTube, whatever, you know, I personally don't do social media. YouTube is a form of social media. So I suppose that I do. I'm on Reddit a lot and that's really about it. But, you know, I don't do Facebook, Instagram, none of that shit because, um, you know, I like a little bit of privacy. Um, and I believe that that want for privacy also comes from previous trauma. You know, the legal troubles I've gotten in the bad things that I've done in the past. Um, you know, even the bad thoughts that I've had um, or the or the bad things that I've wished upon people, et cetera. You know, um, a lot of it came from, you know, again, not, not being taught properly and, um, you know, not 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 being a better listener not being able to empathize anyway um again you know that childhood trauma that people carry we got to be more empathetic towards one another guys the mental health is something that's really talked about in the media and schools uh in workplaces etc and i think that's a good thing but what are we doing about it really you know what are we doing about it the body keeps the score talks a lot about how you know we've innovated in the past as to how we used to treat uh, mental health whether it was ptsd uh you know having psychotic breakdowns uh schizophrenia etc you know all those all and and more you know once technology began to advance you know we were able to treat it even better but thanks to big pharma we've gotten to a point where you know we we tend to try to um uh, f f feed symptoms with you know uh with drugs and while i believe in you know pharmaceuticals for mental health we can't just stop there you know there's there's so many different ways that we can help one another but again the government and big pharma have made it to where it's all about that dough homie so the 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 bottom line has gotten to the point where it's you know it's money over people and man that, that just really sucks but then there's other countries where mental health access is free uh i recently um helped a, a somebody i met through reddit um he posted on the on the stoicism um on the stoic uh subreddit and this man was uh he was a little suicidal um he did something to one of his ex-girlfriends and I jumped in because one, you know, I consider myself a stoic. I, pra I, I practice it and apply it to my life. And I also, um, you know, I'm a professional in, in the health of uh, domestic violence and sexual assault and, and teaching. So I commented on the post. I, I read the post that the replies that people were making. And man, it was I don't see how we as humans can just see somebody down and then put them down even further attack them we know that they're vulnerable and then we're still going to fuck their shit up and oh man i just i just don't understand it y'all um i know we have free will but you know i believe that there's more people that are willing to help compared to that which are going to do more detriment to these people right um I, I I was able to talk to talk him into seeking psychological help from a therapist or a psychologist. And um, that's all I did. I don't consider myself a hero or anything, even though he told me like, man, you're such a great person. Uh, I think I'm a good person, but I don't think I did anything. All I did was see my fellow man in need and I and, and I just comforted him. And that's it. But I found out that. Um, uh, therapy is free in the UK. And, uh, you know, I really wish that I, that was the same here. Um, after doing a little bit of research, some people consider the therapy in the UK as, man, these people aren't any good. All they do is just ask you questions and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, you know what? A, a therapist uh, having an unbiased uh, opinion and somebody to listen to you is it's of such uh, value 
and to think that that's you know unvaluable is just uh, it's outrageous uh, there's a big difference between a therapist and a psychologist um, unfortunately here in america they allow therapists to to prescribe medication and you know that's my opinion uh, you know that you're entitled to yours um, obviously because we 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 don't have as many uh, psychologists people with phds in the field um, for obvious reasons it's harder it takes longer it costs more money you you have to put in more time and and, it, and it's hard you know it's not easy or else everybody would be a, a doctor a psychologist an attorney uh etc but again you know uh moving on the media and social media social media and the media are good tools to have you know they've changed the way that we live the way that the world is for a lot of really good things but then we also have a lot of negative things that come from it and i believe that a lot of it comes from having to control large masses and numbers of people uh and, uh, you know, I believe that certain control is necessary within within the world, but that imbalance is there. You know, when one very small percentage of people control so much of the money, the resources, the governments, uh, you know, that's when you, you have that that equilibrium completely destroyed and then obviously we see the ripple effects happen in real life uh, right now we have huge financial collapses coming and uh, they're constantly happening since the great depression you know since we've moved away from the gold standard since the federal reserve was put into effect which obviously you know it's not federally owned you know it's it's centrally owned by certain individuals we're not going to go into whom or 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 where they are or, or what their aims are right because we still need them we still need the federal reserve we still need uh you know um the financial sector to to do its thing for the world to work out you know right now we have wars going on you know i can't believe that in this day and age we have you know countries like russia uh going into war you know we have a war down south going on in, in mexico you know not a lot of people consider it a war but when there's hundreds and thousands of people dead in the past you know few decades it, it's a it's a war it's a genocide going on uh, but the media tells us different you know uh, we have a huge drug problem in this country in the you know uh whether you consider certain things a drug or not, that's up to you. But I'm talking about, you know, uh, opioids, meth, crack, um, you know, even uh, pharmaceuticals and legal drugs that, that are taking a big effect. Why? Because if you have babies and you're using drugs and guess what they're growing up around you they're seeing that again going back to that childhood trauma that carries on and then these people that grow up with this trauma that never get help reproduce guess what we humans we like to so we're gonna end up um, uh, reproducing you know that's one of the main things that we were uh, literally put here on earth for whether you believe that or not you know uh, but um, it's crazy because uh, a lot of these things can be traced back down to to their original source uh kind of like gun violence right right now uh, uh president joe biden is really dead set on uh attacking uh gun rights in america and you know what uh gun violence is it's fucked up in america y'all you know yes uh m most deaths come from suicide most gun deaths come from inner city violence and rather than, you know, uh, fixing those issues, uh, we try to blame it on guns. A gun is a tool. By itself, it can't do shit, you know. So our government is just dead set on doing the complete opposite of what they know they should be doing. Why? Division, power, control. It's kind of like rape. 
It's all about power and control over another human, whether you believe that or not. This is a fact. And, you know, what is the ultimate goal? I don't know. Uh, but whether you are for or against Joe Biden or you know, the Republican or Democrat. For me personally, anybody that's in presidency, I'm going to try my hardest to support him right now. Joe Biden is my president. The previous one was, you know, uh, President Trump. Before that was Barack Obama. Before that, it was George Bush. I don't like any of them, but I still support him. Why? Because I have no choice. And two, I'm American. So I'm go I'm going to try my hardest to uh, be optimistic instead of pessimistic and uh, hope, hope for the best and prepare for the worst. And that's what all of us should be doing. But at the same time, we should be working on ourselves and focusing on the things that we can control because the moment that all we focus on are the things that we can't control, anxiety, depression, and worse, uh, things can happen to you that come from that. Um, Jordan Peterson, uh, the 12 rules, and then we have beyond the order. I have the 12 rules uh, upstairs um, because, you know, I, I like to uh, go back over books that I've read um, again because self-help. I'm constantly in need of self-help. Some of it comes through music. Some of it comes through uh, working out. Some of it comes through being in the sauna. Some of it comes through stretching. Some of it comes through meditation, praying. Um, and this right here. This podcast, this channel, this is my form of coping with life and and uh, and talking to somebody, whether it's an invisible audience. Um, it's helped me a lot, guys. Uh, you know, I don't care if I have a one follower, one subscriber, one viewer or a, a million uh, because I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this for my family and I'm doing this as a way to show some love, spread some love, spread some knowledge and um and hopefully open my own eyes and learn something every day. I, I feel like I'm learning something, especially why? Because my smart ass is reading. Uh, my smart ass is constantly doing uh, uh, research. I was in banking for over 10 years and, you know, I was a teller, I did new accounts, did lending. Um, and um, I, I wasn't just one of those that, oh, this is what I'm doing. This is all I'm going to care to find out. Dude, I'm a scholar. I tend to dive in deep and unfortunately when i dive in deep i tend to find uh that what i thought was true ended up not being true and that's when yeah those conspiracy theories tend tend to take effect right and i'm sorry but a lot of these things that the government deems conspiracy theory which they're the ones that coined that term remember 9 11 anything that uh, anytime you question the narrative you're going to be called that um but yeah, guys, um, you know, uh, I hope that you guys can get the results you want, you know, find what works for you. Um, because, you know, this life is short. You know, Marcus Aurelius constantly brings up the fact that we're all going to die. And I love that because it's the truth. So if you knew that you were going to die five years from now, what are you going to do? Are you going to freak out, give up and then just, you know, crawl up into a ball and that's it? Or are you going to use the time that you have left and live? You know, um, I like to think of myself as somebody that d does just that. You know, I'm not always traveling. I'm not always doing the most uh, adventurous things. I'm not always, you know, uh you know, doing them, having the most exciting life. But if I stop and think of my current life, guys, I am so blessed. I have everything I've ever dreamed of, everything I've ever wanted. Uh, you know, I have beautiful kids. I have a beautiful, loving wife. My family, my siblings were tight. We're a unit. After my father died, we, we got even tighter. Um, I believe myself as the leader of my family. I constantly call myself the quarterback of my family. Why? Because they look to me. They look to me for guidance. They look to me for safety. Um, I will die for my family. I would die for my brother, my sisters, my nephews, my, my mom, my grandmother, my aunts, my uncles, my wife. Um, that would protecting them. And that being the way that I go out to me is like this fantasy of mine. Why? Because I'd rather go out 
fighting for the people that I love rather than, you know, getting hit by a drunk driver or, you know, of dying of some like cancer or something or freaking COVID, whatever. Uh, but again, that's just me, you know, um, uh, guys, I, I hon honestly believe that if, if you're a true freedom loving person, a freedom loving American. And I constantly encounter people that consider themselves, oh, I'm American. I love freedom. But then they're like, well, I don't like anybody from the LGBTQ community. I don't like Democrats. I don't like Republicans. I don't like, uh, you know, colored people. I don't like this. I don't like that. Oh my God. Then you don't love freedom. Because if you were a real lover of freedom you would mind your own business you would do you and if somebody disrupted your freedom then that's when you should be like hey yo what the you know do something about it but whenever you consider freedom you uh, being a judgmental abusive person trying to limit somebody else's speech trying to limit somebody from doing whatever they want with their own body and with their own lives and uh you know, with their hair, with their genitals, with their skin, etc., then you don't love freedom, you know? Um, I consider myself a real freedom lover. Um, you know, I, I come from immigrant parents. You know, we love freedom. Uh, we love America. Uh, you know, I was born in the West Coast. I'm a California kid. Um, I grew up around all different types of people. I grew up in Northern California, so you best believe that I grew up about, around the LGBTQ community. I have uh, gay and lesbian and, uh, you know, uh, family members. I have a, a cousin that's with a, a trans woman. Um, so to me, uh, I was introduced to that early and my father was a big supporter of the LGBTQ community. He was uh, a lover of gays, lesbians. He supported those people and he instilled that in, in, inside of me and my siblings. Um, obviously, in my life, I've had my homophobic moments and stupid, ignorant thoughts that, uh, you know, uh, that I believe that I grew out of. But you know, um, when it comes to freedom, I am all for you doing whatever the fuck you want with your life. As long as you don't infringe upon mine, I'm all for you. You saying whatever the fuck you want, as long as you don't infringe on what I want to say. I don't give a shit if you're talking hate speech, if you're talking, you know, uh, whatever, because I can easily tune off, you know, uh, tune you out. I can click the back button if I don't like what I'm watching. If I hear somebody saying some shit in, for example, in the college uh, campus where all those preachers came and told us all we were all going to hell, cool. Peace. I'm out. But people don't do that. Remember, Marcus Aurelius said that we have the option to not have an opinion. But people seem to forget that. And, um, you know, uh, if we all just spend time focusing more on ourselves, on our thoughts, on our family, you know, uh, keep getting more education, making more money, getting more freaking physical gains, um, teaching our children, uh, you know, eating better, sleeping better, then, you know, I believe that, you know, that this world would be a, a much better place. But remember, guys, this division wasn't wasn't just something that that just happened. It was something that was systematically done. And, um, you know, uh, it's up to us to combat that through whatever means necessary. And I'm not talking about uh, violence or, you know, or, or taking up arms because I don't believe that's the answer. I'm going to be the first wuss to turn in my guns if, if they were to be like, all right, you know, uh, it's time to give them up or we're going to come and knock your door down. I'm not, I'm not fighting for it. Um, why? Because, you know, uh, history has shown us that if you're mentally prepared for anything that comes your way, you can survive it, you know, with very few scars. So that's why I'm a big proponent of focusing on mental health, focusing on ways that help you live your best life, and then also spreading love. Love is the most powerful tool 
that we as humans have been given in this conscious and subconscious mind to be able to spread um you know, uh, Marcus Aurelius said that before this world was even a, a, a world, you know, or this universe was even a universe. It was just that it was just big space and that's it. But then the human mind came into existence. Then that's when we started seeing colors. We started seeing you know planets we started seeing uh, having taste being able to feel textures etc the human mind is the most powerful tool that we've been given that the world and the universe has been given we have to we have to try harder guys myself included anyway guys uh, again the leonidas effect a channel about spreading love helping one another i'm gonna try my hardest to continue doing better to continue bettering myself um i want to be able to be there for my friends my family um and my community you know um i personally have stopped worrying and focusing on federal elections and i'm more into the local why because that's where i can really feel the change and the effects if i focus on the local then um and I encourage more people and we mobilize together. We can make more change to our to our community. If we focus on the federal, it's it's not going to it's obviously proven uh, that, you know, that voting has very little effect because of the Electoral College doing their own thing, regardless of the popular vote. Right. Again, the Leonidas Effect podcast. I hope you can fuck with me on this, guys, because, yo, um, man, it's hard out here, you know? Um, I'm an East Salinas native back in my old hood, you know? Uh, it was just a bunch of brown and black people, poor people, smoking each other over property we don't even own. Um, when, if we could unite together, spread love and knowledge empathy respect we could really make a big change in this community in this world and i believe it's still possible i'm not gonna give up regardless of what's going on in this world uh because a lot of it will be distractions guys remember fear is the currency of control and if we continue to acquiesce to every imposition placed upon us it will only continue guys we out. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Until next time.